As we approach Christmas, we want to dedicate tonight's episode to Mary, the Mother of God, and honor her Immaculate Conception. Our foundress, Mother Angelica, once explained why God preserved Mary from the stain of original sin from the moment of her conception. Would you expect the Lord God, Father, to design a tabernacle for his son that was spotted in the Old Testament you could not even sacrifice a spot on a lamb. That lamb had to be absolutely, totally perfect before you slaughtered it for Passover. Perfect. Any blemish, out it went. And so you really don't expect our sweet mother to have a blemish of even an imperfection on her soul, do you? Her immaculate conception was so awesome because she never had the slightest blemish of sin. Through her yes to God, our Blessed Mother points us to her son. As we approach a new year of reporting on life and the family, we pray she might wrap us in her mantle and make us more perfect vessels of the truth. We, of course, look to Mary as the perfect example of femininity, Sadly, the beauty of femininity is often overlooked and even erased in today's world. Scholar and author Carrie Gress discusses in her writings that the feminist movement is steeped in Marxism, selling women the idea that motherhood is a chore and women need to be more like men to find happiness. And Carrie Gress joins us now. She is the author of The Anti-Mary Exposed and fellow at the Ethics and Public Policy Center. Carrie, you've written that the feminist movement in your earlier book, Anti-Mary Exposed, is very anti-Mary. And in your book, you wrote about this chant that early feminists claimed as their motto. The chant involves vowing to destroy the American family and promote promiscuity, abortion, and homosexuality. Can you just mm -hmm. explain how this is a total rejection of the Marian spirit? Yeah, no, I, I think this was a startling chant. And, you know, everybody who hears it is, um, you know, sort of blood chilling because of the fact that it's um, it's so powerful and it's been so effective, too, right. uh, in terms of really turning the culture against the family. Um, the, the real target was the, what the patriarchy in this chant was to try and take away the authority from men and really shift it to women. And um, this, again, was was the Marxist effort really to try and masculinize women. And I think that's that's the question that, fem that feminism has been asking from the beginning is how do we make women more like men with the mm -hmm. perception that men actually had a, a better, easier life. And so that was what this was promoting. And, you know, if you think about it, it was back in the early 1970s when this chant was was being said by Kate Millett and others. And, and um, all of these things have come to pass. You know, all of these things were very uncommon in the culture at that stage. And now, you know, we're, we're living and breathing them every day in the culture. So right. it's amazing to see how successful they have been in turning women away from femininity and the family and, and certainly men as well. Yes, the, the feminist movement has been tragically effective. And of course, mm -hmm. the solution to that anti-Marian spirit is our Blessed Mother. How can our society turn to Mary to solve this crisis that we're now in because of the feminist yeah. movement? Well, one of the interesting things that I discovered in my research was what was really specifically being targeted about women. And, um, you know, you hear stories, uh, Sue Ellen Browder talks about it in her work with Cosmopolitan Magazine, was that when she wrote for Cosmo, she said she could write about anything um, about women. She could even make things up, but she couldn't talk about virgins and she couldn't talk about mothers. And of course, who is our lady but the virgin mother? Um, so that's who's really being targeted in this. And I think that if you look and see what's happened to the culture. You know, one of the things that happens when you take women out of the picture is it's very difficult for people to understand a relationship with Our Lady and and certainly with God and these feminine attributes of that motherhood can can bring to people. This kind of nurturing, loving, very healing kind of um, love that women offer to to people. And so when you take Mary out of the picture and when you really target this aspect of the maternal in women, then you're going to be left with a society that's limping, that's you know that's broken, that doesn't really know what it means to be loved in a properly ordered way. Um, nor do we know how to to reach back to God through Our Lady through her intercession, okay. uh, because she, as a symbol of motherhood as that's destroyed, that icon is destroyed, it makes it much more difficult to reach back to Jesus. Well, absolutely. And motherhood is the foundation of our society in many ways. Our society depends on mothers. 
Carrie, what can Mary teach our culture about being a mom? You know, I think one of the things that's really remarkable about motherhood is that it automatically makes you very vulnerable. Um, I've had five children, and I know, you know, there's a few, few things as vulnerable as that a woman who's just given birth to a new baby, that, that, that combination. And I think that Mary obviously shows us that the strength and the perseverance that comes from motherhood, that fierceness of love. But she's also a great reminder of that tenderness, that, in, you know, that innate bond that happens between mother and child. And I think this is one of the things the culture has really severed because of feminism. And it's told us that, you know, children are actually an obstacle to our happiness instead of an avenue to it. And this is what she models so, so well is that love between mother and child. Absolutely. And Carrie, Christmas is fast approaching. Um, talk to me about how you and your family honor Mary during Advent, are there any special traditions or practices that um, that you guys do year to year? You know, I think Advent is such an amazing time, certainly for my family, but just for the church in general, because of the fact that it's the one time of year that we actually get to see Catholic culture in its glory. You know, everywhere we look, whether it's nativity scenes out on roads and, and in front of churches and places like that, Christmas lights, all of that decoration. Um, we, of course, you know, do a lot of the, those great stables. We have a nativity scene in our home and, you know, all the Advent um, candles and the Jesse tree, those kinds of things we've added on to it and just try, try and understand salvation history. Um, but I think even more so, really, I, what I'm trying to impress upon my children is the beauty of the Holy Family and that, that you know, the genius of God in terms of making allowing God to come into the world through a family and the protection of Joseph and the, the love of Our Lady and that the, the way that they all really fit together in this incredibly beautiful way that I think is so lost in the, the culture today. So yeah. that that's really what we're, we're focusing on. And I know I'm spending a lot of time meditating on that myself in terms of how do we reclaim some of this and and bring you know bring this back to our own culture, not just at Christmas, but year round? It's beautiful. And Carrie, again, Christmas is around the corner, and I know after the anti Mary exposed, you published another book just this year. Um, would you like to share a little bit about it in case anybody's looking for a last yeah. minute Christmas present for someone? Sure. Yeah. This is uh, this book is kind of a prequel almost to the anti Mary exposed. It's called The End of Woman. And it uh, is basically a, a secular argument for understanding what's happened with women and the way in which feminism has really damaged not just women, but men and children and the whole fabric of, of society. And, uh, you know, I think it's a, a book like this can be challenging because um, there's so many harsh elements of it. But the last chapter really ends on, I think, a beautiful reflection on women that I've had people say they just cried through the whole last chapter because yeah. it was so beautiful to see really what women can be if we allow them to be women instead of telling them to be like men. Yes, absolutely. It's a very powerful book. I encourage all of our viewers to check it out. Carrie Gress, author and fellow at the Ethics and Public Policy Center. Thanks as always for joining us. Merry Christmas. My pleasure. Thank you. Merry Christmas.